Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be upgrading our solid state drive on the ROG Ally to a larger one. But we don't want to lose our data and so we're going to be cloning the original drive. There's a few reasons you'd want to do this. Number one in my mind was I'd set up my Ally in perfect condition with all my emulators, all my games, everything. And I didn't want to do that all over again. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to do that safely and not losing any data. So you can just swap drives and continue on where you left off. There's a few prerequisites that we have to talk about before getting into everything so that you know if this video is for you. Number one, of course, is you need an ROG Ally. Can't really do this without one. So that's step one. Number two is you need an actual hard drive. Now, unless you wanna massacre your ROG Ally by cutting off plastic and all that sort of thing, you wanna go with an M2 2230 SSD NVMe drive. And so the one that I'll be using personally is the Western Digital SN740 two terabyte drive. You can get these really cheap right now. I bought mine from eBay because I'm in Canada and that was the cheapest I found it. It was around 130 US dollars, but as an American or somebody from another part of the world, you can get them from AliExpress and they're about 110 to $120. These are legitimate drives. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just cheaper. Alternatively, I did see that Newegg might have them in the US for about $140. So you have that option as well in case you're scared of AliExpress for whatever reason. The next thing that we're gonna need is an M2 enclosure. And it basically looks like one of these. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Mine is a Bikel or Bikel, and it's been working out perfectly. I've used it a few times now, once for my Steam Deck and now for the ROG Ally. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to everything I talk about today, so don't worry about having to navigate and find all this stuff. This was $18 US and pretty cheap in my mind. You can also use it after the cloning if you wanna have an external SSD or hard drive just on your dock. So whenever you dock your ally, you can just have it right there. It's really good to just have and keep and, and just put off into the side. Now, there's probably gonna be a few of you that say that you can do the cloning without having an NVMe drive or an enclosure. You can do it through network or some other way. For me, I found this to be the easiest and best way possible just for what I'm doing. If you have the know-how in Macrium and you know how to do a network transfer of your image and cloning and all that sort of thing, then by all means, you probably don't even need this video. But for everybody else that just wants a quick, easy way to do this, $18 and off you go. Next is to avoid any issues with setup in Macrium, you wanna remove your micro SD card from the actual ally. This is just gonna cause problems if you keep it plugged in. Trust me, remove it, it'll just make things easier. And it doesn't do anything by removing it, it just makes your life simple. Plus, I probably assume most of you have removed it anyways just because of all the heat issues that we've been experiencing. Lastly, you need a Phillips head zero screwdriver. I have one for my fix it right here. Uh, as well as a spudger that you're probably gonna need just to get into the crevices of the ROG Ally. If you wanna use a credit card or something else to achieve the same effect, then definitely do so, but it's up to you. I have a full kit from my Fixit that I personally use and recommend, but you can use whatever you want. You don't have to spend a lot of money to open this up. Software-wise, there's one thing that I recommend you do, and that's disable BitLocker. BitLocker is basically meant for data protection and encrypts all your files and causes some issues when cloning. I also don't find it necessary for a gaming device. Now, I've read both ways, and I've seen some examples with no issues if BitLocker is on, and I've seen the opposite. I personally like to go with the cautious approach, so I'm going to disable BitLocker. It's just the way I've always done it, and I've never had an issue, so why change now? So head to the Start menu, type in BitLocker, and you should see Manage BitLocker. Select that, and then under your C drive, if you have multiple drives, you wanna turn off BitLocker. This process does take some time depending on the storage you've used and files. It absolutely could take a few hours. Mine actually only took an hour, so keep it plugged in. But we can still do the next part in the meantime. It'll be on you if you wanna enable BitLocker after we've swapped drives, and it's the same process that we just did, except you would choose turn on BitLocker. If you're choosing not to disable BitLocker at all before cloning, you're doing so at your own risk and outside of the scope of this guide. Now, while BitLocker is decrypting, we can do some other things. Moving on to cloning software, and we're gonna be using a program called Macrium Reflect. 
It's a powerful tool that does a lot of things for imaging and cloning, but for our purposes, we'll just be cloning directly from the Ally to the new drive. It has a free trial for a month, so more than enough time we need to get started. Just make sure you don't install it before you order the drive, as you might run out of time depending on where it's coming from. Head to the link in the description or just macrium.com and click Get Started Home. Click Download 30 Day Trial, enter your email and click the download button. Check your email for the download link and then download and open the executable. Leave everything as default and click download. You might have Macrium pop up itself, but if not, head to your downloads folder and you should see a Macrium folder. Inside, click the one that says home setup. Click next when you get to the Macrium pop up and then next again with the setup wizard. Accept the terms to sign away your life and then click next for the 30 day free trial. Register if you want and then next on the setup screen and then install. Click finish when it's all done, and if BitLocker is done decrypting, restart your ally. Otherwise, wait for it to finish and then restart. Put your new SSD into the enclosure and connect it to the ally. It's fairly straightforward, just pop the drive into the slot and turn the holding screw to keep it tight. Mine also had some cooling pads that don't hurt to use. Open up disk management and let's just make sure it shows. You'll likely get a pop-up like I did about initializing disk. Leave it as GPT and click OK. There it is, we're all set. Mine is disk one. Let's open Macrium Reflect. I did it via the search menu, but you can find it in your program files folder as well. Now you'll see all your drives here. And if you removed your SD card, you should see two disks. In the case of my ally, my previous drive is disk 1, and disk 2 is the new SSD that we just connected. You can tell by the partitions or by the size. Click the Ally drive and click clone this disk under the Ally 500 gig drive. Under select a disk to clone to, click disk 2. Now click copy partitions and you want to click the extend option. Mine automatically extended the C drive, which is the correct drive. But if you click the C drive and then layout on the right, you can make sure the bar is extended all the way so that it's going to use all your space for that partition. Like I said, mine did it automatically, so hopefully yours did too. Now just click next. We aren't scheduling it, so click next again. This page just gives a summary of what we're doing, so click finish. Then click OK and it'll run. Just leave the ally for now. Don't do anything, don't touch it, let it do its clone. This will take some time, so go find those loved ones as usual and spend some time with them. Okay, now that our drive is ready to go, let's open up the Ally. Make sure the Ally is completely powered off, of course. There's six screws on the back and the bottom middle screw is shorter than the rest, so just keep that in mind when we put it back together. Unscrew all six, and now we need to get the case off. If you're eagle-eyed, you probably noticed I wasn't able to get the middle bottom screw off, and so you might have that trouble as well. It's not a big deal, just make sure it's fully unscrewed, and then you can pop the case off anyways. Use your spudger, credit card, or anything you want to sort of pry the cases apart from each other. It was pretty simple to just go along the line from the triggers to the other trigger. It's very helpful to start at the triggers. Then just work your way around until it just pops right off. Now, some people choose to unplug the battery here just to be completely safe. I won't personally be doing so, so just ground yourself before touching anything and don't puncture the battery and you should be fine. Lift the black flap up and unscrew the lone screw holding the hard drive in. Pull it out and put it to the side. Now grab your new hard drive and just slide it in. Make sure you're aligning it the same way with the little groove being in the same direction.
put the screw back in. Now we can put the case back on, which just snaps together. Then screw in all six screws, remembering that the middle bottom screw is the short one, if you were able to get it up. Plug in your device just to be safe and turn it on. You should be at the same state now that you were before the clone. I hope this guide was helpful to you. If you liked today's video, check out my other video on EmuDeck for the ROG Ally, as well as Playknight for the ROG Ally. EmuDeck would set up all of your emulators and get them all up and running with a nice front end and emulation station, whereas Playknight is more of just a front end for all of your games, emulator games, as well as your regular games, so Steam, Epic, all of that. It sort of replaces a bit of EmuDeck, so you could use them in tandem, but I go through all of that in my videos and they might be of interest to you in case you haven't seen it. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.